Welcome to It's a Veggie BLT PETA, which normally stands for I totally suck at video games, but love to play them anyway. But for this video, I'm doing another anime special, so I totally suck at video games, but love to play them, in parentheses, and watch, in parentheses, anime! <laughs> uh, so today I'm going to cover the summer 2021 season, because we're just getting into the fall season now, because anime seasons work like winter is January, February, March, spring is April, May, June. I mean, it works like the seasons. It just feels weird to like, yeah, we're, we're getting into the fall season. I don't know. It's weird to me. It's not really that weird. It's just it, the year starts with the winter season when like normally you think winter ends a year. Anyway, summer season. I watched a bunch of shows. Some of them I actually dropped this season and I'm going to tell you what I dropped. Uh, so I issued the uh, we'll watch later column for a dropped column. But without further ado, because nobody needs to hear more rambling, let's get started with... This one was actually in my We'll Watch Later uh, file from last year. File, column, that's what it wrote. Whatever. And it is Welcome to Demon School Irima-kun. And I love this show. This is season two, actually, of Irima-kun. And it's just super cute. It's uh, like... It kind of looks and feels a little bit like Discount My Hero Academia, only instead of like heroes, they're demons in training. And the main character, Irima-kun there, you can see he actually even looks like Deku. He's the, the one with the blue hair right in the center there. Uh, and he is a human stuck in the demon school, but he has to keep it secret that he's a human. Uh, and it's, it's definitely geared for a little bit younger audience, but it's just super cute and got a lot of feel-good stuff. And it's enough, a, enough to entertain adults too, I think. So this bit, this was season two, there were more adventures. I had fun with it. It gets an A. It's a solid show. Like, I'm probably not gonna buy it, but uh, I, I, I enjoy watching it. Oh, I guess I should go over my rankings too, by the way. S means I'm gonna buy it when it comes out. Like, that's an automatic, I love this show. Uh, a is I really enjoy watching it. I may buy it if it's on sale. B is that was a fun watch. I'm not probably gonna buy it at all. C is that was not like the worst waste of time, but I didn't really enjoy it. And then D was pretty much, I watched this just to get through it because I was already invested in it. <laughs> and then the dropped uh, row is, well, I dropped it because no thank you. Speaking of dropped, this one is the detective is already dead. And I got really far into this. I actually got like eight episodes in before I finally just decided I didn't care anymore. <laughs> the it had an interesting premise or the there this the main girl the in with the white hair. So she and the dude in there are like detective partners. They have kind of kind of crazy powers, but not he's just a magnet for bad luck. She's like got super reflexes and detective ability and they get on adventures, but yeah then the, that's like the first episode. Then then all of a sudden the next episode you learn she's dead. And this other girl, the girl on the far left, uh, has some strange feeling where she wants to meet up with the dude, the detective dude. And apparently she, like, not really spoilers because it's in the first episode, she has the original detective's heart in her. Which is what was feeling like, I have unfinished business and I need to meet with you. Which... That's fine. I mean, tropey, but whatever. Except they don't even, like, stick with that story plot. They move into something else with, like, this other girl, and then they introduce a third girl that they don't even, like, really go into. Then they flip back to a flashback, so you're back to the detective with other... Like, it didn't stick enough to make me care about the plot, and uh, that's why we finally dropped it. And also, um, it just kind of, like, throws in a lot of random stuff. Like, hey, now there are demons in the world and oh hey look we're gonna have like a giant mech that just exists somehow like I was like what are the rules of this world <laughs> it was confusing it was kind of a mess it's not the worst anime by all means but I just there was so much else I was watching that I dropped it even after I watched eight episodes I was like nope it's just it's fine I can't it's gone next is case study of the vanitas vanitas whatever however you want to pronounce it uh, this one was pretty cool. Definitely stylized. Uh, the, I think part of the studio or directors or someone behind it also did the Monogatari series, like uh, Bake Monogatari, Nisei Monogatari, those ones. And you can kind of tell with some of like 
the angles that they'll have people like turn their head around. Like there's a there's a classic. I don't even. I'm not gonna show it here because that's a lot of work. But the classic head turn that that studio does, and it, that's why I'm like, ah, this smacks of Monogatari, which is a good thing because it's it's very pretty. So the main characters are well, one is a vampire and one is a of the red moon, I should say, and one is a vampire of the blue moon. He is he took the name of Vanitas and he can affect other vampires. So in he's using it as good powers and curing vampires who are going crazy, where like their true names have been affected and then they essentially go berserk and drink blood everywhere. Uh, but people are after him because of reasons that they don't quite get all the way through, because this is just season one. It's a good introduction season. You get a good you get a good reading of who the characters are, kind of some hints of like, ooh, maybe they have a weird past, or ooh, maybe this happened, and like dangerous things. They they have an interesting cast of side characters too. Um, not a huge fan of Jean, although I guess a lot of people like her. She's uh, got some really cool powers, like a giant gauntlet and blood, but she's also mm, fluffy. I don't know how to describe it. Like she puts on the like the front where she's like an evil uh, death machine, but she's actually like, "Oh, I'm so nervous." Kind of like, "Oh man, what do I do about this? How do I react?" I don't like Vanitas, except I really do. Like not quite at Cinderi, but a little bit Cinderi. And you know, well, you may or may not know, I don't like Cinderis. But it's pretty. It's got action. It's got vampires. It's definitely got some could be boys love vibes but it's not like it's funny they'll have an episode where like the two main characters get into some like situations that fans would be like "Ooh, that's kind of like boys love and then the next episode will be like nope he totally likes girls it's cool so they're kind of like trolling and baiting but whatever it was pretty i liked it i'm looking forward to season two but it's not one that i'm probably gonna buy so we'll put it in a I'm going to move this over because it's bothering me. It's not spaced right. There we go. <laughs> uh, next is Girlfriend, Girlfriend. Guess what I did with this one? Dropped it. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have spoiled that right away. But uh, I gave it a good fashion go because it could have been fine. The, the male isn't even pictured on this. But there's a dude who's dating the redhead. Finally, like it's his childhood crush of years and they're finally dating. But then the girl on the bottom left is like, I like you too. I took a year off school to learn how to be the perfect housewife just so I could like court you. So he's like, I can't turn her down. Can I date both? And they're like, no. But then shenanigans ensue and they begin a relationship in secret where they're dating each other. I watched three episodes of this wondering if it would be funny enough or get good enough. So I didn't even really meet the blonde girl. And then the girl with the purple bow is like the redhead's friend, but I assume she gets mixed in later. But either way, I didn't get that far because it just wasn't funny enough. I don't know. The, like, I didn't like any of the characters, so I didn't want them to get together. And then the redhead is just annoying. And the other girl has like no spine. <laughs> and the guy is over exuberant and everything like he's not like a perv which is nice at least he wasn't like a super pervo guy but he's just too naively exuberant that's the word like i can make everything okay i will be amazing and we can all get together and we're pure and we love each other but like not in a funny way and not in a not in an intriguing way it was just boring it was boring not funny and i didn't like anything so Three episodes was enough to make me go, no thank you. Yep. Next is Remake Our Life, which this one was a surprise. I had no idea what this one was going into it. Uh, obviously you can kind of tell from the title that it's a, a do-over show, so you can hardly see him, but the dude on the left in the sweater, he he's living not the life he wanted like he wanted as a kid to be maybe go to art school and make games and do stuff like that but instead he went to business school um, and he's good enough at what he does he's pretty good at planning and later on in life he works for a game company but everything kind of goes sour and he doesn't get to meet the creators of his dreams and he goes huh I wonder what would have happened if I went to art school instead and then he wakes up and it's you know 12 years or 10 years earlier and he went to art school instead <laughs> 
and he meets the the platinum trio or whatever that were like it's the artist the voice actor and the writer who's the dude in the back who were, were the people he admired the most and he's actually in their house like a, it's like a not a dorm but they all rented a house together to be cheap and they get together and they do projects but then it takes a bit of a turn and I won't spoil too much um, of what happens although I will admit that the turn it takes kind of made it less fun to watch so the beginning part was really cool of kind of showing a little bit of the realities of how movies and games and things are made and the real hard work behind it and getting into the characters and watching them grow um, but then yeah then it turned kind of awkward not bad it was still good to watch but it wasn't as amusing as it was in the beginning so this one I mean it was good definitely great animation cool characters a little bit fan servicey for no reason sometimes but you know whatever what you gonna do uh, but it, it had heart I enjoyed watching it but I'm probably not gonna do anything with it in the future so this one gets a B from me like it's worth a watch if you like artistic and creative stuff but it's not it didn't stick the landing we'll just say that next is how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. Every every season I pick one or two isekai to watch. I give the isekai a chance because sometimes they're really good. Sometimes they're really bad. This one was actually just kind of in the middle. <laughs> um, the main dude in the front there, you can see he gets summoned to a fantasy world as a hero. Uh, but he's a... Uh, what are they? He's like a civil servant study, so he's studying how to like run cities and stuff in Japan. So he has different knowledge and skills than most heroes who are summoned. In that, when he hears about what the kingdom's suffering from, like they they have a food shortage and there's a, some other things with like their neighboring kingdoms, he comes up with plans like on a civil service level of how to fix these things instead of going off and like fighting demons. So that was like a cool premise except then they also have like characters who are heroes and go off and fight demons and even the main guy he ends up having magic he has like the power of darkness so he can put his consciousness into inanimate objects and have them do things so he can have like three quills writing contracts at once I don't want to get too much into it it it's neat it's it's got some good world building and like I said some interesting takes on how to live in a fantasy world and how to fix problems um, but it it wasn't amazing. I, I'll keep watching it. Like, I probably won't go out and read the light novels. I'll watch the next season just to see how it keeps going. Because they've got some interesting plots and uh, characters that were introduced. Like, a, the main kingdom that kind of everyone defers to and now has their eyes on him because he's been doing some things that are drawing attention. Such and stuff like that. But it's a B. It's a B for me in that I enjoyed watching it, but I'm not going to do anything further with it. Now, on the other hand, here is another isekai that I was like, all right, let's give it a chance. Tsukimichi, Moonlight, Moonlit Fantasy, sorry. And this one was way cooler. <laughs> uh, so uh, the main guy in this one is the guy in the middle with like the derpo eyes, and he gets transferred to a different world by the goddess, but the goddess think, thinks he's so ugly that she was like, screw you, you don't get any good powers. You can speak every language but human, and then I'm just going to shove you over here in this corner. But he also gets powers from the Moonlight God, which is the, the guy in the upper right, who is like from Japan, which is where our hero was, you know, transferred from. That guy gives him some great base powers, which makes him super powerful but he's pretty much always at level 1 like in any rankings but he's still crazy powerful even though he's level 1 uh, fun fact they, they say this in like the first episode so it's not a real spoiler but he's actually his parents were people from the world he the goddess pulled him back to so like they were from this world and he was just born in Japan after the parents went to earth just to like basically live in earth because they liked it so I don't know if it really counts as an isekai if he's just going back home. But uh, so that's the premise there. The the interesting thing about this one is it's got it's got like something dark going on. There's a bunch of weird happy like slapstick moments and comedy, but then there's like 
every now and again it peeks out of like there's something darker and weirder going on in this show. There's a they don't even get to it, but he has like a childhood friend from from Earth from Japan who he made cry or something and it like is really I don't want to say dark again, but it really shows like a like something terrible happened. But they never really go deeper into what happened. They just kind of like hint at, hey, something's happening. And later in the series, there's a moment where like, oh, whoa, that happened. I don't want to spoil that. So that's what kind of kept me in Tsukimichi. Normally, I would have just thrown it to the side as another, all right, it's a fun like harem-ish isekai because the two two people, the other two girls on this cover you see here, he uh, ends up making them become his servants. Not by any, like, he's just more powerful than them, so they submit to his servitude and they want to serve him. Um, so it's kind of harem because they all want to be with him and stuff like that too. Which, like I said, I would have just dismissed it and been like, alright, it's fun. But it was that little hint of something else going on that's keeping me going. I think this one's getting a season two as well. And I'm definitely, definitely going to watch that. So this one gets an A. Because I am down for more Tsukimichi whenever that happens. So there were a few more isekai this season than I thought or remembered because we've got Sunny Boy, which is un undescribable, indescribable. Uh, it's <laughs> Sunny Boy was its own thing. It, all the characters in the first episode, that's uh, everyone in this school gets transported to this other world where they have powers, and that's as normal as it gets. <laughs> There's a lot going on in Sunny Boy. I really did like it, but you kind of have to like be ready to just not understand what's happening necessarily. Weird stuff happens that might make sense. I kind of want to read like people's thoughts on this and how they put it all together and the hidden meanings or hidden things that I missed on the first watching. Because there is some weird shit that goes down. I liked the characters in this and all their interplays and how their powers affect it. Because like, you know, some people were kind of losers maybe normally, but then all of a sudden they get a power that everyone's depending on. So that changes their social standing and how others interact with them and view them. So there's like that going on, which is like normal school stuff and like humanity stuff. But they're also in the middle of these crazy worlds that they keep moving to, where like one world, everything gets set on fire if you don't earn something. So like if you just say, hey, I'm gonna, you know, thanks for this flag you made me, and you don't actually repay them with anything else, the flag just sets on fire. Or there's other worlds that just... They're weird. It's weird. It was a weird anime. The ending was kind of weird. It was a weird trip the whole way around, but I didn't hate it. Um, I don't know whether to give this an A or a B. I... Uh, that's a tough call. Let's just put it like right there. I am going to put it right there for now. <laughs> it's an A, B. It's worth a watch. Like I enjoyed watching it every week a lot, but it, it takes a special kind of person to watch it. And I don't know. I would watch more, I think. I wouldn't buy it though. You know what? So I'll go and be. I'm not gonna buy it, but it was it was worth the watch for if you're in the mood for just something weird. And speaking of something not really weird but really fun to watch was my life as a villainous or my next life as the villainous. All roots lead to doom. Season two. I love that show. Like it's just fun. The main heroine, well, she's the villainous, quote unquote. Katarina. The, after the first season she gets through, she gets for those who don't know the first season, she gets basically isekai'd into her favorite Otome game that she was just playing, where she hadn't beaten the Otome game so she only knows a few things but she know, she gets trans or she gets uh, reborn as the villainess of that game, so the villainess has some pretty bad endings that she's trying to avoid. And in the meanwhile, because her personality totally changes from the villainess of the actual game Every, everybody falls in love with her. Guys and girls, doesn't matter. Katarina is the the one, but she's so oblivious that it's goofy because she'll be like, oh cool, thanks for all these snacks, and just not care that everyone's in love with her. But she got through all the 
Doom flags of season one, but so I was like, ooh, what's season two gonna offer? Which I, I wasn't actually questioning. I've read the light novels. I know what season two was, but it was still fun to see it in animation. There's some new bows that get added to her harem, essentially. Um, there's more kidnappings. I think there's like two or three kidnappings in season two. So they gotta, they gotta get better bodyguards, I think. But it's just, there's comedy, a lot of comedy, a lot, a lot of comedy, a little bit of heartwarmingness, a little bit of romance. It's worth watching. It gets an A for me, because I, I would like to actually own these seasons, probably. Uh, I might wait for a sale, or like, for my birthday or something. But I would own the villainous shows. Do, do, do. Next is... Ah, Peach Boy Riverside. This show pulled a melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya in that it aired not in chronological order, which some people love and some people hate. I thought it worked out okay, but I'm the type of person who can just work through context or just take it as it is and kind of figure it out as we go along. Some people might not like that as much. With this show, I'm not quite sure why they did it because the... I guess where the ending is chronological wise for the show just wasn't as impactful as how they ended it in unchronological order and they wanted to like do some arcs beforehand to like make people excited about it instead of just like a slower intro which there isn't really a slow intro <laughs> like things get crazy pretty fast but essentially there's people like the main two people in the front right there uh, who have these powers to fight Oni really, really well. They get these little peaches in their eyes, hence the Peach Boy. Uh, if you know the, the actual story of Momotaro, Peach Boy, it's loosely based off of that fable. It's like a Japanese fable. You can look that up. It's pretty cool. But let me tell you, there's a lot of bloody action in this one, like, and <laughs> towns that get destroyed. So that's, uh, that's different. But the main character, Sally, who's in the who's the blonde in the front, basically, she's wandering. She's finally got out of her kingdom and is seeing the world, and is kind of upset at the amount of, I guess, racism that's going on. People don't get along with Onis. People don't get along with demi humans. You can kind of see that the rabbit girl up there in the middle in the schoolgirl outfit. They don't explain why she's in a schoolgirl outfit, by the way. She just is. So she's upset at that, and she's kind of making it her mission to. Not necessarily like make people get along because she knows the world doesn't work that way, but to try and promote cooperation between all the races. And not everybody's keen on that or willing to help out, but sometimes she wins people over. So it's like journeys like that. Her journeys with people she makes friends with and people who she interacts with and uh, some, some adventures. The other character on the cover there on the lower right is... Definitely not as willing to make everyone get along. He just wants to kill all of the Oni for reasons, which they will get to in the, in the anime if you watch. So then, uh, but they're friends, he and Sally, kind of. So she wants to get along with him, and it's all, it's all just a thing. There was a lot of action. I don't know. I didn't love it, though. It was cool, but it was not, didn't grab me as much as I was hoping. So it's going to go in B. Um, you know what? No, it's gonna go and see. It wasn't something... <laughs> I didn't waste my time watching it. Maybe it shouldn't be a C, but it's not really... I don't even know if I'm gonna watch the season two, is what it is. So that's why I'm putting it in the C. Like, it was okay. I didn't hate it, but it, was, it didn't draw me as much as I was hoping. I like how I talk while I'm opening other stuff about different series. This is Life Lessons with Uramichi Nissan! It was cute. It was funny. I wanted to like this a lot more than I did. It's a, it's about a very tired adult who is does not have a very good life, but he's a main actor on a children's TV show, so he has to be happy and active, but sometimes he can't hold it together. And it's like it's a dark comedy show, and it's got some real great voice talent, like Mamoru Miyano is the dude in the green sweater. And uh, I forget the other ones, but like, like I wanted to keep watching it and liking it, but it just wasn't... I'm not really an episodic comedy type person. I need more drama or plot or something to pull me along instead of kind of bits. So if you, But if you're looking for like a dark comedy short bit show, 
this one is pretty good. It has some continuity and the, some other stuff, but it was not pulling me for this season. Like, I, I did not have enough time to devote to this because I wasn't looking forward to it every week. So, unfortunately, after, I think, four episodes, I did drop Uramichi Nissan. Might get back to it when I need a random comedy, though. Do, do, do. Ah, yes. Next up is the Eat Ten Deities No Only Peace. This show... This show was... Uh, so close to being a contender for anime of the year for me. Uh, it's crazy. Definitely, uh, d is despite it looking like it's very kitty and colorful and fun, do not let children watch this show. <laughs> it's hyper-violent. It's got some, uh, some definitely geared towards adults things that go on sexy times wise so it's, it's not for children despite the looks but I think that's kind of what made me like it even more like the contrast between the colorful like derpy looking characters and what they're doing I enjoy that kind of thing the plot lines and the characters and the action and the animation Everything was just so good in this show. This was the show I was like, hell yeah, let's watch Eat a Ten. This was my show. And then we got to episode 11, and I was like, hell yeah, let's watch the next week. I don't know how this is going to end. This is going crazy. Nope. Uh, episode 11 was the end. It ends on a non-ending. And <laughs> that was... That made it, like, from, like I said, anime of the year contender to... Oh, that's disappointing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I still suggest it. Uh, again, only if you <laughs> if you can handle a lot of violence and a lot of uh, raunchiness. But it's got a lot there. It's crazy. It's hyper. It's it's yeah. That's all. It's like hyper crazy cool. I like that kind of stuff. Also, this this show wins best theme song, best OP of the season, at least that I watched. Uh, it's a banger. The song is awesome, the visuals are awesome, it's a, as Giguk says, it's a banger. It was a banger. It's our, It was the best song of the season for OP, uh, with a runner-up being Tsukimichi. It was a little bit of a different song, and it had a good beat, and it would get my head nodding, but Ida Ten beat it. So, even though, even though the ending of Ida Ten was such a disappointment, I still have to give it S-tier, because I would own that. I would love to buy that. It was... Probably, I have to go through some more of these, but it was probably my favorite of the season, so it gets S tier. Uh, yep. Alright, what's next on the list? Ah, The Dungeon of Black Company. Uh, I'm going to just start this by saying this was more Konosuba than The Combatants Will Be Dispatched was. Like, this I would have believed more being from the Konosuba guy than that other one. It was funnier, it had better animation? I don't know, the animation was kind of okay in both. Had more and better, or had better characters, better character relations together. It wasn't an amazing show, and it wasn't always laughable. Like, the comedy was very hit or miss, uh, but the main dude, it's an isekai, so yeah, this was a big, big isekai season. <laughs> he, he worked his way up to being like the president of a company so that he could just relax and do nothing living in a penthouse suite while he was in Japan. Then he gets sucked into this world where he basically becomes a, a slave worker in a, a, a mining dungeon where they, they mine for ores that power up all the like fantasy things. So he tries his best to uh, essentially get around that and work his way up to being like a CEO again so that he doesn't have to do anything. But there's a lot of uh, shenanigans that go along and different people he meets and monsters he does slay or doesn't slay, you know, depending. Uh, I don't have too much to say about it. It was neat. I didn't... I thought I was going to maybe drop it early on, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because it was funny and it, it, it went to interesting places. Like, it was a comedy the whole way, but sometimes when you think in a normal show something would, you know, like, oh, he's going to win or oh, he's going to lose. They, they, they play and do a little bit of the opposite in this one. It was fun. It was, like I said, it felt more like Konosuba than the combatants will be dispatched from last season, but it still wasn't, like, amazing. It gets a... It gets a... It gets a... It gets a BC. <laughs> it gets a BC. I have to decide. Do I... Did I like it enough to give it a B? Or was it a C for me? Like, I didn't hate it. Um, 
It wasn't. I pro if there was a season two, I don't know if I would watch it. So that's the thing. I'll put it in C for now. But it's a high C, if that makes sense. I just don't have too much in C's. I'm a very. It's very easy to entertain me. I don't hate many things. <laughs> so I don't even know if I'll have anything in the D rank. I'm that kind of person. Ne Ooh, too far. Next up is. Oh, okay. So I don't know if this technically fits in the summer season, but whatever. It's uh, I watched it during the summer season. It's Netflix shows, except for recently when they're finally starting to simulcast a few. Next, Netflix shows get kind of stuck in Netflix jail, so I don't know what season it actually came out. But I watched Godzilla Singular Point in the summer season. <laughs> it was a bit of a mess. I liked the beginning of it, and I liked how they were going more weird science angle. But the characters just, like, were all super geniuses, despite how dumb they were, if that makes sense. Like, they, I don't know, you know, working for a random factory that puts together a giant robot and fixes electronics, but they know molecular science and, like, can hack everything. It didn't quite make sense that way-wise, but the character designs were cool. Except for Godzilla. I did not like Godzilla's design uh, in the actual show. Like, the, the kaiju themselves were okay, I guess. And there weren't quite enough of them. I don't know. It takes a long time for the show to get off, get off the ground. However, that is apparently pretty typical to Godzilla. I haven't watched a lot of Godzilla movies, so this probably wasn't made for me. Obviously. I didn't hate it, though. It was fun, but it was slow, and it, it was kind of... Uh, you just had to let your mind go and be like, okay, yeah, sure, everybody knows all this crazy metaphysical stuff. Yeah, whatever, it's fine. So for that, and because it kind of had a weird ending and characters that were introduced but not really gone over, it gets a C from me. I, I probably won't watch more, but uh, it wasn't, like, bad. It, it, had, it had kaiju and big robots, so that was fun, but it also had weird AI and just too much going on. Too much. Alright, and then there was... Oh yeah, Battle Game in 5 Seconds. Uh, what can I say about this? Essentially, a bunch of random people get chosen, get given powers that they can only use when their handcuffs are like let go in these games that are set up by the evil person in the upper left who's testing out everybody's powers and how they're going to do stuff. And everyone's powers are a secret and they have to figure out how to use them correctly. And our main dude, the dude in the front, his power is whatever his opponent believes his power is. So he's got to he's got to like lelouch it up and be sneaky and make people think he has a power so that he'll actually have that power. And I thought maybe that would be good. It's, it wasn't good. It wasn't very good. I watched three episodes, and that was enough for me to know I didn't really care enough. <laughs> the pacing was a little weird. Some of the characters are not great. There was... I don't know. The, I didn't care about the girl at all. Her, her powers, like, she can quadruple her physical reactions somehow. Uh, the dude with the bandana and the stick can make his stick turn into something that cuts through anything. Like, there are weird powers like that. Uh, and then there's the girl in the negligee there who just can form icicle crystals or something and like kills people so she evil but I don't know the it wasn't compelling they didn't give enough they didn't give me what I wanted in that like the main character wasn't logical like crazy enough he was no he's not a Lelouch or a light or whatever he's just a gamer dude who didn't do enough to make me want to watch more so I only watched three episodes and I dropped it no oh, hey whoa there we go drop. You do not get to be bigger than Uramichi-san. There we go. Next. Oh, man. I gotta... Here, let's just move that up. There we go. <laughs> Next up is the second season of I'm Standing on a Million Lives. So this show, the first season was a surprisingly good show. Like, it's... Okay. It wasn't great, but it was good enough to keep me watching. It had something going on with it. Again, it's kind of like Tsukimichi in that there's a darker something going on with this show. I think it's based off a light novel, maybe, that has me interested in how it plays out. This second season 
had a lot of death. Um, it introduced one new main player character and kind of more of the guy who joined in the last season, who is the the blonde in the upper left, or sorry, upper right. And then the new one is the the lady in the the middle there, the blonde. So like those two got introduced. However, this second season was honestly mostly about other characters in the world they get transported to. Yes, this is another isekai. <laughs> How many is that? It's like four or five, depending on if you count certain ones. But so uh, there's a, there was a lot more death in this season too. There was death in the first season, but like actual death in this season, like that's what that's what I'm saying. Where it's like a kind of like your typical throwaway isekai you'd think, except the main hero kind of hates everything, but he still has. He hates everything, he hates himself, but he now realizes that there are some people worth saving. Um, but people still are dying, like, that they can't save everyone, and they're trying to deal with that. They also uh, busted in a interesting kind of mini-spoilers here. Interesting thing that there are other people in Japan who are also playing this quote-unquote game. Because uh, like, there's a game master who brings them here. But they only very briefly brought that into it, and then they just focused on more stories in the, the quests that they had to do. And it ended on a interesting note. There's these Dragon Masters they have to stop, but we haven't stopped them all yet. So I don't know if there's going to be a Season 3 of this. Season 2 was kind of a surprise. Like, it was fun, but I didn't know if it was well-received enough to get that Season 2. However, I, I would watch more of this. It's not amazing. But it's got just enough of a different vibe for like this kind of fantasy isekai that it has kept my attention. So it gets the B. It gets the B. And that I like it. I'll watch more. And now we are looking at Remain. I thought this was gonna be one of like my favorite of the season because it's about a bunch of boys and doing water polo in speedos, and it's. I think some of the creators behind it were also behind Tiger and Bunny, which was just one of my, not like a top 10 anime ever, but definitely I really enjoyed Tiger and Bunny. So I was looking forward to that because the, uh, the team knows how to like write some good camaraderie and banter. And you know, it was, it was a fun anime. It's uh, the main character there. Uh, he actually has amnesia. He was like a, he was Japan's like number one junior high water polo uh, player, essentially male player. He gets into a car accident after like the finals match and loses three years of his life. So he's now he has a, he goes through rehabilitation. The kind of the first episode is more him like doing rehab, and he kind of he acts like he's basically he's like got a sixth grade mentality in that he's cheerful and kind of shy and a little bit naive. Uh, but now he's in high school and. This high school that he's at doesn't have a great water polo team, and he didn't want to do water polo, but the main, the captain, the guy in the pink wavy shirt in this picture, convinces him to do it somehow. Like, they, they get the team together. Most of the, and most of the season is actually them getting the team together, and then they suck for a while, and then, but then they're just getting their, their groove together, and they're gonna, they're gonna train, and they're gonna go to nationals or whatever it is, the, the preliminary tournament. Except, uh, and this is a spoiler, I'll admit, and it's a little bit of a late show spoiler, but it's worth mentioning because it might get you to keep watching the show. He gets his memory back, but forgets the time that he spent with these other ones. So, all of a sudden, you're, the main character is not who he was before. Like, he's kind of an asshole, and you, f like, he lost all of the young naivete, and whatever those three years that he lost, he became just a powerhouse asshole, I'm number one, you all are less than me. So that definitely, I was getting like, okay, this is just going to be a normal sports show, whatever, it's going to be fine. When that happened, I was very intrigued. I'm like, oh, how are they going to play this? Like, he's an asshole. What are they going to do? Uh, and I like, I like how they handled it. I won't say any more than that because then you won't have a reason to really watch it except for the pretty boys and speedos. So they did, they did some good things. It was interesting, uh, but it just the pacing was a little bit slow and a little bit too comedy over drama, but which, which is fine. 
it just it, it's not a free it didn't it didn't draw me in like free did um and probably not not that i've watched all of haikyuu don't sue me but like people who love like haikyuu and like regular other sports shows it's not enough of the sport to really make you love the sport and it's not enough of good character interaction to make you love the characters like there just wasn't enough they they tried to 50 50 it and by 50 50 ing the balance you lose out on both ends honestly if it had been less sport and more personal relationship like free i probably would have liked it more if it had been more sport than personal relationship and just how to learn it someone who likes sports wouldn't have liked it more so that was kind of the disappointing thing there it was really it was still a fun watch but it's not something i decided i'm gonna go out and buy or i loved crazy so it's in the b it, it, yeah that's it's a b Oop. All right, so Nighthead 2041. I f this <laughs> I know that this is kind of based off of Nighthead Genesis, which is like a series. I think it's novels and there's an anime that I never got into despite kind of wanting to. It's very sci-fi, psychics and also gun powers and like cyberpunk style stuff. And I'll be honest, I liked the few episodes that I watched of this one, but uh, just judging by that, you can tell that I actually dropped this one. Uh, that, despite it being like the 3D CG, the animation was actually way better than I expected. They were they got some good character expressions. Like it didn't feel awkward and stiff. Their expressions they it felt more like 2D anime. So I whatever animation studio did it, kudos to that. I would have kept watching more. Except there was just, as you can see, so much I was already watching, and I, this one moved a little bit slow and a little bit awkwardly for me to. It, it just it came. There came a week when I accidentally skipped it, and then I just never got back to it. Uh, the main two on the left are brothers. The main two on the right are brothers. They are all end up being psychic. The ones on the right are part of like some organization that's essentially trying to brainwash all of the world that you know psychics don't exist and you should just follow orders there's no religion and they kind of go after anyone who believes in religion and powers and stuff and yet they have psychic powers so obviously they do exist and I didn't get too much further into that uh, except the ones on the left apparently like time skipped 14 years or something they they went to some facility and then all of a sudden when they got out of the facility it's like I think it was 14 years, it's some long time later, and they're like, wait, what happened? We, we didn't, how did we miss up that time? Uh, I feel bad, like, I dropped this one, I might get back to this one, like, sometimes I, uh, I, I use, I watch anime while I exercise at lunchtime. This one might be one where I'll throw it on there just to kind of catch it up along the time, but unfortunately, it didn't quite have enough to make me need to watch it this season. Um, let's see what's next. Oh uh, yeah. Speaking of another 3D CG one, this one is D Side Traumere, the animation, which I believe is based off a mobile game or some kind of game. I didn't know that at the time. It doesn't really affect my thoughts on it. It's uh not very good. <laughs> the main characters come onto powers when the mascot character in the middle like bites them. And then they become knocker ups or knocker uppers or something, where they battle like weird, crazy demon monsters that invade Shibuya or the you know Japan. It, I mean, it's there's transformation sequences which are cool. They have cool weapons, but man, it's not very good. <laughs> the girl on the left, the with the black hair, like her character arc. Within one episode, she went from demure schoolgirl who gets kind of yelled at and beat up by her dad sometimes uh, into all of a sudden she's cool and free and she wears a uh, fishnet and has piercings now because she stood up against her father. Like this all happened in one episode. It's kind of like that kind of thing. I think they were just kind of like trying to introduce the characters quick so you want to play them in the mobile game or whatever it is. Yeah, I, mm, the animation's alright. Like that wasn't bad. It's a little stiffer than Nighthead I think but Still not bad for what it is. Like 3D CG animations have gotten a lot better for anime. I will admit that. But this one was just too dumb that I didn't care. So it got dropped. Yep. 
Next is My Hero Academia Season 5. Uh, I finally caught up on Season 4 that I hadn't finished and started Season 5 and hot dang, My Hero Academia is it's, it's good. It's still good. I Season 4 was a little bit of a eh, especially the, the school festival arc, which is where I stopped watching, but once I caught up in this season, some real cool shit's going down. I think especially because you get more introduced to the adult heroes as well, so you're kind of seeing what's happening in the outside world more than just the Academy during this season. And Endeavor gets his redemption arc, and Endeavor's awesome! And then Hawks is introduced, and Hawks looks pretty cool. Uh, also, hey, speaking of the Academia kids though, uh, Shinso finally gets gets his due. He was a cool character, and he's probably going to be on a hero team. I assume he is in the manga. I don't know. I don't actually keep up with the manga. Uh, it, there was a lot of action this season. Uh, normally this show kind of goes like training arc, uh, something crazy happens, tournament arc. And this season actually kind of started with a tournament arc and then something crazy happened and then training. I don't know. It's <laughs> It kind of went out of order, but like, yeah, all three of those things still happened in this season. It is what it is. If you like My Hero Academia and Shonen, you're gonna like it. It's it's still got good quality, still good characters. Uh, they introduced, like I said, they introduced more of the regular heroes, the top ten, which was cool. It's great. I will watch the next season. It's it gets an A from me. I don't I don't own it, but I wouldn't mind owning it if somebody you know like got it for me for Christmas or something. <laughs> All right, we're almost done, guys. Next up is. Uh, Tokyo Revengers. I know I included this in the last one because it started in uh, the spring season, but it has finished in this summer season. Uh, well, when I say finished, I mean it hasn't finished. <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be another season of the anime. I know there's the manga is actually almost complete, or maybe it just did finish by now. A lot of weird and crazy stuff happened in this season. There was Bloody Halloween and... Uh, something else. I don't remember where season one and two kind of left off because it was one long season essentially for for watching it. But uh, they, the season probably wasn't quite as good as last season in that they introduced some new characters and minor spoilers. One of them that they introduced that's supposed to be really meaningful gets killed off pretty quick so you don't like it's hard to care about the meaning that all the characters have of him when he's not, you know, around. So you don't get too much uh, connection, I guess. But I still like all the characters. They're all derpy. <laughs> but in a fun way. They like each other. Or they hate each other, but they tolerate each other. I don't know. It's a, it's a gang. Um, there was less... Uh, the main character was kind of dumb this season. He he knew things that were going to happen, but just kind of acted a lot dumber, which isn't great. Like, when you know something is going to happen, because he, he can travel from the future 12 years to his past. So, like, his, his future self, his 26-year-old self, is the ability to go back into 12 years the past and his junior high self, or high school. I don't know exactly how old they are. And so he can look up and change things. When he's in the future, he changes things in the past. He goes back to the future, looks up what changed, and tries to figure out how to get a better future because, like, his girlfriend's going to die, or at least the girl he really likes is going to die if he doesn't change things. So he knows certain things. He has information. But when he goes back to the past, like, I don't know if teenage hormones take over or something, but he just becomes dumb and kind of forgets stuff or doesn't realize things that he literally could just look up. So that was a little frustrating, like a lot of frustrating actually. Um, we did learn more about the past of like the main gang leaders, like uh, Mikey, who's on the lower left, and his brother, who is unfortunately deceased. Spoilers. Um, so yeah, there was a lot more flashbacks and past about the gang versus figuring out the mystery of how to make a better timeline this season. It was still pretty good though, and entertaining. And I liked it, and I would watch a season three or season two, whatever they want to call it. So it gets an A for me. It's still, it was still a lot, like I said, worth watching, and I liked it, and I want to watch more. So it gets that A. I didn't mean to leave this one for last. I just kind of threw these on here in a weird order. This one isn't technically done yet. 
I don't even know when it is done, and it's a bunch of little shorts, but it's for Obey Me, uh, which is a is a mobile game, a uh, gotcha game, in fact, that uh, my sister and my other friend play. I have not played the game. I will not play the game. I play Genshin. That's enough gotcha for me. But I wanted to kind of, you know, get a get a glimpse of the characters so I could kind of talk to them about it when they're talking and be like, oh yeah, I like this guy. So I think only like six episodes of this have come out so far, and I've watched them, and they're like five minutes each. It's, um, it's a something. <laughs> I imagine it's a lot better if you already know the characters from playing the game. And it's very comedic. Like, don't expect drama or uh, good plot lines. It's The shorts are basically these characters, cute boys doing cute things, essentially. Um, but you do get a little bit of their personality. So it's been working for me for the intended purpose in that I now know who they are and can kind of run with that so I like it it was fine it isn't over yet but I think I can judge this one already because it's just gonna be a bunch of weird shorts showing off the characters which is fan service for fans of the game and it might bring some other people into playing the game I'm not gonna play the game uh, for what it is it gets a C from me because I don't care about it necessarily but uh, it, it's entertaining enough and it did its purpose so there you go that is my ranking of the summer 2021 anime season you can see there were no D's uh, everything was good enough that I didn't feel stupid watching it I think if I had finished the detective here you know what just for funsies there we'll put that there if I had finished it instead of dropping it at episode 8, it would have gone into the D. So we'll, we'll put it in the D just so that there looks like there's something there. That's uh, that's my thoughts. Not not too many amazing shows this season, unfortunately. Um, and the fall, the fall season ain't looking that hot either. But at least there was Eda 10, and Eda 10 met all my expectations up until the very end when it fell. But it only fell because I wanted more and there wasn't any. So, like, because of that, it still deserves the S. Some good A tier ones. Tsukimichi, I think, is definitely worth checking out. Um, because it's 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 worth it. It's not going to seem like it's worth it in the first couple episodes, but it is. Keep 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 plugging through. It's cool. Um, Su Sunny Boy is another one of those where it could have been a B or an A, like I said. So that it's going to depend entirely on how you watch anime. But there you go, those are my thoughts on the summer 2021 anime season. So, if you watched one that isn't on this list, tell me if it's worth me putting it on my my back burner, which has a lot of anime. But hey, I do get through some of them. So if you have a suggestion of something I missed in this season, let me know and I'll, I'll give it a go. We'll see if I like it. If uh, any of the ones I dropped actually pick up better, let me know that too. And I'll give them a go, except for Girlfriend Girlfriend. I don't care enough about that one. <laughs> Uh, there you go. So hopefully you could use this to maybe watch some anime if you were curious on what was good and worth watching for the summer season. Uh, or you can stay away from some anime if my explanations of them sounded like, ooh, I do not want to watch that. Hope it helped. I had fun watching it. I'm going to keep watching anime, so you guys are going to keep getting a few anime videos when I feel like it. As usual, I don't know how to end videos, so I'm just going to sign off now and watch some more anime. It's a veggie BLT pita! I totally suck at video games, but love to play them anyway.